Support for this episode comes from Modern Football Technology. Modern Football Technology provides real-time opponent tendencies and self-scout while eliminating manual data entry into Huddle, DV Sport, and Exos. If you're tired of tools that are time-consuming to learn and perform inconsistently at best, then we recommend Modern Football for a fresh perspective. Schedule a demo today at teammofo.com to see a battle-tested tool that's proven to perform and deliver value. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code CC10 to receive 10% off your first year. And listen to our recent episode featuring Folsom High School Defensive Coordinator Jordan Ersick to learn more about how the 2023 California State Champion uses modern football to dominate their opponents. imperative to know who you are and what you're trying to do and the why behind it and then getting your coaches bought into that and then getting your players to understand when they know the why and how the offense fit together and why we're doing certain things their understanding and their execution goes to another level i reached out to the guest on today's episode after i saw and confirmed their stats from the 2022 season 62 touchdowns 3204 yards of passing 1,805 yards of rushing, which gave them an average of 500.9 yards per game and 48 points per game at the high school level that has 12-minute quarters and a running clock after the 30-point differential. To me, those numbers screamed high-level execution, and I wanted to dig into the what, how, and why behind it. Mike Peck is the offensive coordinator at Burley High School, and he is leading this offensive effort. He shares the what, how and why, we boil those down at the end of the interview into our winning edge takeaways and ideas for implementation. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512-814-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast, or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. Today we're going to talk offense, and I have some stats to share that really popped at me when I saw them the first time. So this is from the 2022 season, 62 touchdowns, 3,200 yards passing, 1,800 yards rushing, 500 yards per game average, 48 average points per game, which are crazy numbers at any level, but I think especially at the high school level, which has 12-minute quarters. And joining me to discuss the how and the why behind this is the offensive coordinator at Burley High School, which put up those numbers, Mike Peck. Coach Peck, thanks for taking the time to join us here on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. So, Coach, before we get into some of these things, I think what would be good first is give us an overview. What does this offense look like out on the field from a schematic standpoint? Yeah, for sure. You might hear some cliche things here, but we, yeah, we're, we're a spread offense. We want to make the defense defend all 53 and a half yards of the field. You're going to see a lot of four wide, five wide. We want to be able to attack the perimeter, attack vertically, attack the intermediate part of the field. A spread style offense. We want the ability to create a light box through the pass game and spread the field as much as possible, make the defense defend that. Now with that, is is that a 10 personnel that you're basing out of? Yeah, we'll base out of 10 personnel and spend a lot of time in empty as well. And again, I mean, going deeper, that's kind of a year to year thing. That's what we were last year. We'll be in the same system, but we'll be a more 11 personnel next year. So I'm a big believer that personnel dictates everything. You've got to make sure you're highlighting the strengths of your players. And within there, then what are the, I guess, hang your hat on concepts that you guys use in the run game and in the pass game? 
run game, power and counter. We're gap scheme, so power and counter and all those variations. Love what Lincoln Riley does with with counter. Mike Norrell at Florida State, uh, they run counter more than anybody. And so our hang of run play would be versions of GT and GH counter. Pass game, there's two concepts that it all starts with. That's four verts and Y corner, and we build from there. And then we're big on quick screens as well, but we view that as part of our run game. I mean, that's the foundation of our offense right there. So when I saw those numbers the first time, I thought, wow, whatever these guys do, execution has to be really good. You don't put up those kinds of numbers accidentally. You don't put them up just because you have better athletes than everybody else. You know, to, to put up big numbers like that. There has to be some consistency in execution. So when you think of that in the execution side of things, what is it that's making this work? Well, I think it's a couple things. And again, you have to have players to be successful. And sure. we're, we're very blessed to have some really good players. But I think two things that we do that can separate us a little bit, it's one is how we install our system. And then two, it's how we rep it and, and practice it out on the field. Those two things are two massive things I think make a big difference with us. And, and how we're able to execute our offense. And more importantly, it's imperative to know who you are and what you're trying to do and the why behind it, and then getting your coaches bought into that, and then getting your players to understand. When they know the why and how the offense fit together and why we're doing certain things, their understanding and their execution goes to another level. And I think our coaches do a really good job of conveying that to their position groups, and our kids buy in because they know exactly why we're doing it and uh, the theories behind it. And as you said, it starts with the install. And for you, that is not necessarily we're going to wait till August to do it, that this is something that you can do almost as a year-round activity as leading up to the season. Yeah, 100%. I'm a huge believer that the entire offense should be installed before you ever step on the field. And you'll still have an install schedule. And we have a seven-day install schedule we use. That way you're highlighting certain things each day. But the entire offense will be installed before you ever step out there. I mean, it's an educational term, front loading, but it all starts with the QB in our system. And so we do QB school from January all the way through to August, really. We will cover everything they need to know scheme wise and skill wise and how those two things fit together in the system by the time we start our first practice, whether it's June 1st or June 2nd or whatever it falls on that year. Huge believer, when you're out on the field, your QB should be helping you teach things and understanding the big picture when you're out there the last person you should be talking to about why we're doing something out on the field is your QB he should know that beforehand and then we extend to that with the receivers O-line etc they're going to know the entire system before we ever step out onto the practice field the practice field for us is reps and again it's a cliche thing but people standing around should not be a thing and it's getting as many reps as possible within the scheme and that helps us execute at a high level. Let's dig into a couple of things here on the install side. And you said it starts with the QBs and QB school and essentially making those guys another coach out onto the field to the degree of knowledge that they're going to have about how the system works. So looking at that and I guess the curriculum behind it, what does QB school look like for you guys? What's really step one, the first group of things you're going to focus on moving these guys all the way through to, as you said, you know, you want them to understand the schemes. You also want them to understand the techniques that go along with this. Well, I think first we cover the foundation of football. We talk about field zones. I mean, we get pretty simple. I mean, what's the flats, deep thirds, quarters, all that stuff, key terms we use, how we go through our progressions, the terminology with that. But once we teach the foundation of that base, and that's after year one, that's just review for kids. So we kind of go through it pretty quickly. We literally go through our entire offense from beginning to end. We have power points built on our passing game, our run game, our quick screen game, slow screen, and how we structure the offense. And it's literally a step-by-step -step process. And we just go through that with the QBs so they can see how it's built together, what we're trying to do and why, and how it all fits to each other. And the biggest thing I can say is, I mean, we have a QB who he's going to be a junior, but he's a brand new QB in our system. And there's nothing he can't draw up right now. And he's never taken a varsity snap just with how he understands how the offense is structured, the flexibility of it. And if I draw something up, he knows how, how to draw that up and how we read it. And it's only March right now. And so I think that validates a lot with how we teach and install with what we do. When you're doing this and running your classroom, I mean, what are the tools that you're using? Is this just film, huddle? How do you put this all together? We create all of our installs on huddle. 
I know some people like some of the other systems out there, but Huddle works for me. And so I create installs for our run game, front side concepts, backside concepts, formations, motion shifts, etc. And so we use that. And then I obviously use clips of the last year as well with that. But I also love finding clips of college or NFL teams running our stuff. And I'll screen record that and I'll post it to Huddle in our terminology and use that as teaching tape. I, I'm a big fan of that. It, it's cool for them to see that college and NFL teams are running things that we're running. So the biggest thing I use is PowerPoint because I can structure that how I want. I can insert pictures, videos, et cetera, and it's all in a progression to teach how we uh, teach our offense. And so I'm a big fan of uh, PowerPoint and, and using that. And I mean, I've looked at a lot of QB school stuff. I go back to, gosh, who was the guy at Trinity? Andrew Coverdell. Yeah, Andrew Coverdell with what he did with his QB school and his PowerPoints. I don't do it exactly the same, but model it close to that. And so PowerPoint is a massive tool for me. He's done such a great job with it. And I know the drawing part was a big part of what he does too and being able to get those guys not just looking at it but actually drawing those things up you know, really cements the learning so with this how much of this is self-study how much of this is you guiding them through classroom sessions etc we can share anything on huddle online anytime we want so the very first step i always kind of release the installs so they can get an idea and look at it and, and i love huddle because for the most part you can see who's looked at what right but when we release an install a couple days later, that's when we would cover that on our PowerPoint. It helps them just like anything else. Once they've seen it once or twice, then they see it with me and I'm, I'm talking them through it. It helps them understand it a lot better. And honestly, you can see who really took, took the time to learn it. I'd be mistaken if I didn't add that. We do quizzes all the time. We just use Google quizzes and put our offense in there and whatever we covered for the last couple of weeks. And they have to go on there and take the quiz and then obviously the scores get automatically done and, and sent back to me. So, yeah, we have competitions with quizzes and things like that. I mean, sometimes it's like a $15 gift card to the local restaurant or something, but uh, make the QBs compete a little bit in those quizzes and take pride in learning everything they can. As coaches, we know that some of the biggest hurdles to our team's success can come from off the field. Your team needs support to tackle the endless list of expenses, uniforms, training equipment, travel, and more. But raising that money can feel like a full-time job. Thankfully, there's Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with your team every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser. With options for online donations, digital discount cards, premium product sales, and even spirit shops, Vertical Raise has top-of-the-line solutions for every fundraising style. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com and we'll get you connected with an exclusive offer on your first fundraiser. Moving this out onto the field, then you said the other part of this is really how you guys practice. That can be done a number of different ways. You hear all kinds of different installs. You mentioned a seven-day install. So let's start there. I know the three-day install became super popular, especially with Dana Holgerson, who made that popular, and then other people talked about their different versions. I was a little bit more in line with you, taking seven days or so to, to install it. So what's that seven-day install look like for you? It's all laid out. It's on a spreadsheet, and it's actually the same one. I had a short stint as a receiver coach at Central Washington University, and that's where I got that install sheet, and it's the best one I've seen yet. I just, I've used it ever since. But it's going to have your formations, your motions, shifts, quick game, drop back, protections, run game, and it has each of that listed so you can just map it out from day one to day seven. And what I do is I just go in there and – basically I, I make sure we get our whole offense in through those seven days and i don't mind a three-day install maybe at the college level but for the high school level i feel like seven days is perfect and it really just maps out the plan of here's what we're installing here's our focus for each day and going forward and it really helps with making practice a lot more intentional as well because you're going to apply or ha have drills that go with the install schedule so you're working the drills needed within that scheme that you're installing that day it helps everybody be on the same page and again, just creates that plan. And so everybody knows what we're doing, when we're doing it, and, and why we're doing it. So you mentioned the importance of practice and how you practice for our listeners. If you could give us an overview, I guess, and, and frame that out, what's the typical practice going to look like for you guys? 
Tuesday and Wednesdays are our work days during the season. Obviously, we, we'll have early outs. I think one of the things we do well, and it, we model our practices off of college practices. So before practice ever starts, we'll do early outs. We'll get the offense together, and it'll either be QBs, running backs, receivers, or an O-line separate, or everybody together. But we're going to basically walk through the installs for that day and talk through it and get reps and we get a lot of reps at that. So that, that's a 10-minute period right there. So whatever we're working on, again, it's reviewed right there. We talk through it. And that's something that I used to see Eastern Washington do all the time with Bo Baldwin when I'd go over there and watch practice. And he had a ton of success. And I, that's one of the things I stole from him with us, how he started practice on offense. And it was really cool how that transitioned right into their warm-up and then right into practice. And so, again, cliche, we, we do practice fast. We're not on the field very long, two hours at most. Most of the time, it's like an hour and 45. It's a lot of reps in different segments. So we, we use five-minute segments, five to ten-minute segments, depending on how long you want it to be. I think one of our secret sauces that really helps us is our situational periods. We'll have three situational periods a day where it's O versus the next best D. And it's going to be a situation like, hey, it's third and 12, and it's live. And then the next time it's just random throughout practice, it'll be, okay, we're second and goal at the five-yard line. We talk with the kids about why we're calling what we're calling here and what we're trying to accomplish. So, like, the easy one, for example, is, and this is a big mistake a lot of kids make, is it's third and 12. We use all four downs most of the time. So if it's third and 12, a lot of high school kids or players in general, they think they got to get that first down all in one play. No, we're pulling them aside. We're talking to them. Hey, all we need here, the goal is to get half the distance, set it up a fourth and manageable because you know we're going to go for it. And that helps with the, obviously with the keeping the decision-making process and what the kids are trying to do. And they know if they if it's third and 12 and they get six yards, that's a successful play. We're set up for fourth and six now, and we feel comfortable with that. They don't have to get it all in one play. And then same thing with goal line situations with how we want to run our routes, chances that we want to take or chances we don't want to take, things we like. And it, it gets the situation where that situation will happen in the game and the kids know what play we like to call and, and why we're calling it instead of it just being completely random and to a kid just, oh, we're just running another play. And that's, I think that's, again, a big thing that separates us. Our kids know why we're calling the play and know why we're calling it in that situation and what they're trying to do. And that obviously takes your execution to a whole nother level. That's such an important part there where you mentioned it. The kids understand what you're trying to uh, accomplish. In the old days, when there was actually grass instead of turf on the field, you, you could tell what teams were really situational and, and how they practiced because there wouldn't be that one area of the field that was worn out. You know, the, the teams that yep. would practice, you know, ball in the middle of the field on whatever yard line over and over and over again, like you're moving the ball. But it, it brings them into that situational awareness. I mean, football is always played within context. And yes, you have to rep plays, but if you're not adding that context to it, and especially teaching the why, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to get that execution, obviously, which you guys get on game day. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And that's one of the things I'll stand by is that situational stuff, the things we're able to get done talking in those situations and getting kids to, to see it. And, and I think kids are a lot different these days. I mean, they want to know the why. Like when I played, I just did what the coach told me to do. Right. And honestly, I probably wasn't that smart. <laughs> but kids, they want to know the why behind things. And the more you can teach them the why, the more they buy in, in my opinion. And so those situationals are really beneficial in my mind. And I can just think of so many times where we had great quick talks and you could see the light bulb go off. And then all of a sudden now those situations aren't a big deal on Friday night because they've repped them. They know what I'm thinking and they know what we're trying to do. And it's just at that point, it's just another play. Instead of like, gosh, it's third and 12. They're like, okay, it's third and 12. We got a plan. Let's do this. And that's one of the things I take really good pride in is our kids being, being prepared in those situations and understanding football at a, at a high level because kids are smart man they, they'll learn what you teach them and you just got to take the time to teach them yeah no question unfortunately i learned that early on in my coaching career and, and just coaching junior high and I was with my dad who's a teacher and coach and a buddy from high school who had come back from playing at a d1 in college and we literally installed a version of their college offense and taught them the why behind it and, and we were just amazed by how they executed. Now, the quarterback I had, you know, eventually went on to uh, 
play in the NFL, was a three-time Conference USA Player of the Year at Louisville, and uh, is the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons now. Um, that that helped that helped that but at the same time like all the other kids understood too what we're doing that they, they weren't out there just running the lines right you know here's the diagram run it like it's shown well there's a lot of things that can happen there's there's a lot of things you need to understand the situation like your example of hey it's third and 12 we just need six here to get it right i mean i can't tell you how many times coming up you know through the years learning and, and having to teach kids to like man look what you did on this particular play we called you know i have one just sticks out in my mind at the college level. We, we were called stick, which we run a lot. And, you know, normally we break that thing. We call it a four, five, six yard out, right? They would roll into it. Yep. And, yep. Speed out. and he decided, you know, he was going to get one yard past the sticks. And we showed him like where the ball was thrown because the quarterback, you know, did not know he was going to take it one more yard. And had he done it, he would have caught the ball and got at least two more yards after the catch and had the first down. You know, it was it was obviously a learning situation. Now it hurt us because we lost that game and that was a critical third down. But, you know, I think it goes back to us on the coaches like we probably didn't explain that well enough that do not ever decide that you're going to convert this to get past the sticks. You hear it all the time. And so kids will pick up, you know, heard here on TV. Oh, you got to get to the sticks. Well, no, not necessarily. Right. So, yeah. so just a good point there. I think that everybody can learn from like, don't, don't blame that on the kids. If you haven't covered it. 100%. I, I agree completely. And that's kind of funny. You say that because it always drives me crazy when I hear they got to run the route to the sticks. Well, they don't understand that doesn't work with the spacing and timing of the play, the QB right. progression, his, his footwork and their receivers footwork. And when they're supposed to come open within that progression, <laughs> there, there's so many, so many details that, they just throw out the window when, it's, when they say it's third and eight, they got to get to the sticks. Well, uh, with spacing, timing, and rhythm and progressions, that's not, that's not how that works. No, not at all. So let's dig into the other side of this, the, the coaching. And obviously you mentioned, you know, what you guys are teaching and that, you know, you're getting out on the field and it's reps. In terms of working your different situational periods, the plays, is everything scripted? Are you guys... Are you guys practicing, you know, getting your calls in yourself? How do you guys run it from a coaching perspective? Our head coach actually does a really good job of setting that up. It's nice as an OC. I don't got to worry about that stuff, but he will have it. He'll just have a situational period on the script, and he won't tell me what the situation is or the, or the DC what the situation is, and he'll just, hey, here we go. This is what we're doing. And so it makes me think on my feet as well. I don't have time to plan. I just got to know at that time when I'm going to call, just like I would on a Friday night. And then I, for me, I, I pull the guys aside and I quickly talk to them about it while we're doing this. We run the play. Maybe it's, again, just going back at third and 12, we get half the distance. Now it's fourth and six and, and we run it. And we're, whether we get the first down or not, they'll come back. And then I get a debrief with them of, again, why we called the first play, why we called the second play. Maybe here's what we did wrong. Here's what we did well. And we just get to talk them through that and, and kind of use it as, as a teaching period. And I just think that's, that's so beneficial. And even for me, not knowing what the situation is going to be, like what hash we're going to be on, what yard line, if it's maybe it's, maybe it's third and three and we're on the plus 40 and that's what the head coach says. And so in my mind, I'm going to take a shot there, but I don't know it's going to be that one until he says it. So it makes it realistic for us coordinators as well. And that's how our kids get to know kind of how we think and what we like in those situations. Cause it's not something for me that's scripted. It's, I kind of know what I like in that area, obviously, in a situation, but I don't know what that situation is going to be till the head coach says it. Right. I think that's really important because it's just, it's true live reps in that sense. Yes. I love it. So in that regard, a couple things and a couple questions with that um, one, you mentioned the debrief now. So is that a set period and how much time do you guys have for, you know, essentially what becomes a teach period, right? To go back over what just happened. A minute or two. We kind of set it up to where, like, the JV does the situationals as well. Mm -hmm. So when JV is going, I have the varsity off to the side talking to them about why and, and how and all the theories, what we could do better, et cetera, whatever I need to talk about with them. And JV is going. And so usually a minute or two. And we'll repeat different situations there for, for five, ten minutes, whether it's third down situations. You can do third and short. And the next time it's third and 12 right hash. Or next time it's fourth and five, et cetera. But – it might be a 10 minute period, but you're going to get five to six reps depending. And then obviously that teaching time when they're off to the side. And honestly, the teaching time to be able to explain the why and, and talk to them about 
the theory behind it that that's so valuable it, it just i'll never not utilize that format again I really like having that ability. I mean, we talk about being up-tempo in practice. I think you always have to be coaching. But when you have some built-in times, like you said, hey, the JVs out there, whatever it might be, built-in times to get that review and get the why behind it and the understanding. I imagine it helps you too as the coach that you're sitting there and verbalizing, well, what did we just do? What did I just do? How did I call this? And, and maybe finding some things that you might do better when that really hits you on game day. Oh, 100%. There's been plenty of times where I was like, that was a stupid call. <laughs> I need to maybe rethink my thought process on that. And, and you know, even in games, like you, you make a bad call in that situation. You're like, gosh, dang it. I knew what I needed to call there, but I didn't for some reason. You knew there's a better call. And having those reps in practice makes you better at it, just like it does with the kids, right? We're all just trying to get as many reps as we can and be the best we can when those times come. And But just like kids make mistakes coaches make mistakes too and, and we'll talk through that and I have no problem there's a couple times this year where I just looked our offense in the eye and I said that was a bad call I apologize I messed that up but again they respect that and they trust you from just how you've coached them the rest of the time and the process of it and how you treat them and all that stuff but one of my big things is respect's a two-way street like I think not only do the kids need to earn respect but we as coaches need to earn respect from the kids and I think that's one thing that our staff does really well. To wrap this up, getting to the day after the game and the film review and, and how that's going to look for you guys, what do those sessions look like? We actually, we don't bring the kids in on the weekends. I've done both before and had a lot of success both ways. I kind of like, on the, I'm on the side right now of not bringing them in. I want them to be kids and enjoy their weekends. But we as coaches, obviously Saturday, that will be our day where we evaluate our film, break things down, take notes, do what we need to do. And then Sunday, we'll come in and meet as a, as a coaching staff. And the first part of the meeting, obviously, is reviewing the game. And then we move on to game planning for the next opponent. With technology these days, we do a ton just through whether it's a spreadsheet on Google where we can post our thoughts. We text all the time. But I would say Two good things are, I mean, we, we always have our offensive coaches group text that we utilize 24-7, and then we have a spreadsheet online with each coach. They can post their thoughts and comments for each position as they're watching film and things like that. That way, we can see it online and we can talk through it that way, and when we do get to Sunday, it's nothing new. We've already kind of talked and saw what other people were thinking, and again, just trying to find ways to utilize technology and don't take coaches away from their families as much. I like that approach as well, and we certainly can get carried away with all the time we put into it, but finding ways to work more efficiently, smarter, rather than harder, I think is always a benefit to everybody involved. It's hard to keep coaches these days too, right? Coaches get burned out even at the high school level pretty quickly. And so I think something like that, that approach is very helpful. Oh, absolutely. And I'm a big believer in that. I just think the days of having to meet all day with the staff, I mean, I'm sure plenty of people do and it works for people, but I don't think it's something that you have to do anymore with technology. And so it's like you said, work smarter, work harder, find a way to be able to get done what you need to get done, but also make sure families or coaches can be with their families because you're 100% right. It's really hard to find good coaches and teachers in the profession anymore. So when you do find them, like what we got, you want to do everything you can to keep them happy. <laughs> And I love football as much as the next guy, but I don't want to be in the room for seven hours on a Saturday uh, when my family would want me at home. You know what I mean? Definitely. Well, well, coaches, you can follow him on Twitter. It's at Coach Peck 11. That's P-E-C-K and the number 11. Coach, I appreciate you taking the time here and letting us get some of the details behind a high-performing offense. And certainly, best of luck to you and the Bobcats in 2023. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you having me on, and it was a blast to talk some football, and, and hopefully uh, one or two things can help some coaches out there. Here are our winning edge takeaways and ideas for implementation. One, teach the why. I firmly believe that our players need to get beyond the diagram as it is drawn. I'd always tell players, quit just running lines meaning that I wanted the deeper understanding so they could solve problems on the field on the fly. Coach Peck makes the why an integral part of their process and it leads to a higher level of execution. This requires intention on the coach's part. Whether it is through your own QB school or off-season installation, 
Getting your players beyond rote memorization will pay dividends on game day. Two, always provide context. The game is always played with a time on the clock, hash, yard line, and score differential. The more your players understand your system and plays within context, the better they can execute when they are faced with those different situations on game day. Be situational in practice as much as you can. Always tie a scripted play to a down and a distance and be sure it is in the mindset of your players in practice. That will translate to game day if it is simply the way you do things. Three, just like I tell players, don't just run the lines, I'd tell myself, just don't be calling plays. Coach Peck brought up a great idea to implement in practice with the head coach putting the play callers on the spot with the situation. The coach has to think quickly and make the calls he's planned for those situations. Noel Mazzoni talked about this idea on the podcast and how that's how he calls plays for the entire practice. He has someone chart what's called and the situations so he can be sure that he gets all of his game plan plays reps. I think that scripting what you need situationally and adding some of these unscripted call it periods creates that situation where both the play caller and the players get practice. The debrief that Coach Peck mentioned is an outstanding idea as well. This is huge for learning and anchoring the idea of why. Be sure to go to coachingcoordinator.com for enhanced show notes with links to related episodes, resources, articles, and with our winning edge takeaways detailed in text. Also sign up for our free weekly tip sheet, which highlights the best ideas from the previous week, trending episodes, and featured resources. Some of our guests like Coach Peck offer downloads and resources. Coach Peck shared his seven-day install template, which will be available on coachingcoordinator.com. Follow me on Twitter at Coach K Grabowski.